there, folk. Have your parents ever bought something from a shop? And you get this thing, and you actually discover that you've got to assemble it. You've got to build it yourself. Well, it happened to me the other day. We bought my son a double bunk bed. And it was quite a nice one. It's got a little place to sleep on top. And then underneath the bunk, it's got a lovely little work table. And that's where he can do his homework and do his studying. All right. And then it also comes with a few drawers. And you can put clothes inside those drawers. So when I saw it at the shop, I really, really liked it. I loved it. It looked so fantastic. And I said to my wife, we've got to buy this. It looks so cool. We'll buy it. And so we did. And I asked them, would they deliver it? And they said, yes, they deliver it. And so they delivered it to our home. And oh my word, I was horrified. This huge, wonderful bed with this fantastic work table at the bottom with these wonderful drawers on the side came in a box. In a box, I kid you not. A box about that thick, wide as anything and as long as anything and the whole thing was squashed up in a heart and i was horrified i phoned the shop and said you got a problem here i ordered this bed you gave me a box and they said yes sir but the bed doesn't come assembled follow the diagram and build it yourself and that's what we're going to look at now different diagrams so let's have a look at a bit of theory quickly when you buy certain items from a shop for example, a piece of furniture, sometimes the item is not fully assembled. You would ha uh, then have to assemble the item yourself. And another word for assembled and assembled is build. Okay, so you would have to build the item yourself. These items usually come with a set of instructions and or diagrams. When we refer to instructions for assembling, we're referring to words, usually short sentences, describing how to assemble an item. When we refer to assembled diagrams, we are referring to annotated or labeled pictures that explain in detail how we must assemble the item. Okay, so let's have a look at this. In the image below, instructions are given in a picture form only. Each number on the diagram represents one step in the assembly process. You are given five written instructions below. In the table below, match each written instruction to the step number you think it describes. Okay, so here we go. Step number one, two, three, four, five. And then you're given different statements over here. And these statements, you've got to decide which is step one, which is step two, and which is step three. Okay, so connect the composite video cable to a TV, connect the speaker cables, connect the power cables of the system and TV to the AC power, in other words, electricity, connect the control cable, connect the FM antenna. All right, so what are our instructions? We've got a diagram, and the first diagram is, shows me that I'm connecting something here. And what am I connecting? It looks like I'm connecting the speakers. So that is step number one. Let's find it. Connect the speaker cables. This is step number one. I'm going to use a different color here. Step number one. Okay. Now, what is step number two? According to our pictures, we're connecting the FM antenna. So connect the FM antenna. That was step number two. Can you see how we're linking the uh, words with the actual diagrams, the pictures? I wish they sent me an easier one like this when I had assembled my son's bed. Okay, now number three says this. Um, one, two, we've done. Three is disappeared, so we'll come back to three. Four is this. They're connecting something to something else. Not sure what that is. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at step five. Step five now, we collect connecting TV and something else all to uh, the AC power. So connecting uh, to the power, uh, here it is, AC power. So that would be step five. We found step three. Here it is. You could hardly see it. We're connecting this thing, okay, to this thing. 
Right, so what are we busy connecting? Are we connecting the video cable to a TV? No, we're not. Okay, or are we? Yes, could be. All right. Um, oops. So, and um, are we connect the control cable? Okay, so what is my control cable? I would say this here is my control tape cable. So this is number four and number three, we're connecting the video cable to a TV. Okay, can you see how we've linked the pictures with the words? Right, now sometimes they will just give us the words and in some instructions they just give the pictures. Let's have a look at another example. Now study the assembled instructions given below to wire a plug and answer the questions that follow. Now this has a whole series of steps. In fact, there are eight steps. Let's have a look and read through each of them. Step one, using pliers, carefully bear the ends of three wires inside the electrical cord for about half a centimeter by cutting away the plastic insulation. So you know that when I've got wire, around the wire there's some plastic. And it's saying to you, when I look at a cable, it's going to have three wires coming out of it. At the end of each of those three wires, for about half a centimeter, strip that plastic off. Take it away. So there's only the copper wire that's showing. Now, step number two. Gently twist the strands of copper wire with your fingers until each strand is tight. In other words, those little pieces of wire sticking out, let's turn them. Okay, so that the wire doesn't have all these little fragments. We're now taking all those fragments, tying them together and making sure they stand as one solid piece. Step three, remove the new plug cover uh, by either snapping it or unscrewing it. We get different plugs. Some plugs you've got to unscrew. Some you stick a screwdriver in what they call the snapper. You twist it and voila, the plug snaps open. Then, uh, unscrew the little screws on each of the plug prongs. So you know plug has got three little prongs, okay? And on them are little screws, and you uh, got to unscrew those plugs. Then we insert the copper wires into the holes in the prongs. The green and yellow wire must always be inserted into the top. I'm going to underline that. The green and yellow, okay? Then. The blue wire must be inserted into the left prop. And finally, the brown wire is inserted to the right prong. Then we're going to tighten the screws on each of the prongs. Make sure the electrical cord is for, firmly gripped by the arrestor clips. And these clips over here are called arrestor clips. They tighten that piece of um, cable. Then we replace the cover of the plug and voila our plug should be ready to be used again. Okay now what kind of questions can they ask us? What color wire must be inserted to the prop, uh, top prong? What color in the left prong? What color in the right prong? Okay and what is the main difference between a two prong plug and a three prong, uh, prong plug. Okay, so the colors are quite easy because it was given to us in our instructions. It says to us quite simply that the green and yellow must be in the top, the blue in the left, the brown in the right. And then the question is, what's the difference between a three prong plug? Okay, so if you look at your plug like this, it's got three uh, prongs and then you get your two prong plug. And the two prong doesn't have that top one. And that top one is for the earthing, hey? That's your green and yellow wire. And that's to earth anything. In other words, if there's a short, your electricity, your switch at your electricity, your main DB will trip off. Okay. Now, two prong doesn't have that. So actually, the safer plug to have would be a three prong plug. Okay. So, we're learning about different ways of assembling things. And I thought it would be kind of fun 
if we make something out of a square piece of paper. And if you look at the screen here, we are going to, and I got this from an origami website, and, and go into their websites, they have lovely stuff there. And we're going to take a square piece of paper and we are going to make a lovely little puppy dog. Now, how do we do it? Well, first of all, it says we need to take a square piece of paper. And if you look at me now, I have a square piece of paper, right? It then says, and let's read it together. It says, start with your paper, white side up, okay? Fold the top corner down to the bottom corner. So we're now going to fold, I've got the top corner and I'm folding it to the bottom corner. And that's what I have. My next one says that we've got to now fold, uh, make the ears. So I'm going to make my ears and that's what I'm doing. Can you see the ears? And we'll do the same this side as well. So there is my little dog's ears. Right. Then we got to make the little nose. And it tells us there in step number four to fold our dog's nose up a little bit. And then in step number six, we're going to fold this again. And so we fold it once again. Right. So here's my little dog. And if I pull my little dog's ears out, then what should happen is the dog should do something weird. Uh, his mouth should be moving. My dog's mouth is not moving. But I've followed my instructions and I've got my lovely little dog. All I'm going to do now is draw in the eyes, draw a lovely little nose here, and voila, I have my dog. How did I get this nice little dog? I followed a set of instructions. Okay, and that's what this section was all about following instructions. So, in this segment, we've covered the following. We've looked at various assemble diagrams and instructions, and I trust you've learned from that, and uh, it's a fun, fun, fun thing to do. I love getting all my classes to make these wonderful little things. Sometimes we make little ships, sometimes we make butterflies, sometimes we make aeroplanes, but they've got to get all this from following a set of instructions. Guys, we're going to chat again shortly after the break. See you then.